Before we get Hoppy Hour going, I want to remind you about my sponsor, Simply Prepaid of T-Mobile and Gulfport, as they will give you a free Android when you switch from Sprint, Verizon, or AT&T. They also have on-site repairs, the fastest service at cheap prices. If you go there and tell them that Ryan Hoppy sent you, they will give you a badass deal. They are at 5014 Gulfport Boulevard South. That is 5014 Gulfport Boulevard South in Gulfport. Call them at 727-331-1934. That is 727-331-1934. All right. Should be played at high volume. This should be played at high volume. Preferably in a residential area. The following thoughts on Hoppy Hour do not represent Cox Media Group or its sponsoring. Anything you hear may and will be used against you. Thank you. Voted as best local podcast in Tampa Bay by the Creative Loafing. You're listening to Hoppy Hour. What up? What is happening? This is Hoppy Hour. I am your host, Ryan Hoppy. And live on the show from the Miguel Show on How 101.5, Holly O'Connor is live on the show. What's up, Holly? Hi, Ryan. How are you doing? I'm so good. Thank you for having me. Out of everything you've done in radio, you've gone to radio conferences, you've mm-hmm. done morning shows. How honored are you to be in this room right now? Um, super honored, <laughs> obviously. I am going to assume that you saved the best Miguel show member for last. Oh, of course. Of course. Because I course. had Nervous Jared and then Miguel and now you. Yes. Yeah. So so best for last, right? Yeah. Okay. That's how it goes. Absolutely super honored. I was kind of beginning to wonder like where my, uh, my turn was coming. Yeah. It's getting weird because I have so many people on that it's like unique that people want to come on like there's people that are like why haven't i been on yet and i'm like you can come on whenever (laughs) so it's cool to have you on yeah because i first met you at the morning show boot camp a few years ago we didn't talk because i was more with like bj shea and brother wheeze yeah but i remember seeing you guys at the bar and i think i was a little tipsy i remember that because i was like (laughs) that is a tall bitch (laughs) <laughs> that is a tall bitch, and I got to go say hi. And so I didn't actually understand what you were doing there at that time. No one I, did. <laughs> no, not in a bad way, but I thought that you had a show somewhere, but then I realized you did, but it wasn't quite what I thought it was. It was like overnight freelancing. R- but yeah, pretty much. And then when I found that out, I was even more impressed with you that you came all the way out there and, and wanted to learn well, from I some cool people. Well, I actually lived there. I lived in Chicago. Oh, at the time? So it was just a 20-minute drive. Well, never mind. <laughs> no, it was really cool that you came, though, because you know how the caliber of people that yeah. you see at boot camp. Oh, it's insane. It's amazing. I do this really greedy thing in my head where when there's like a panel... And there's all the big names up there. I try to guess what the combined net worth of everyone up there is. <laughs> just because you'll have some of the biggest names in radio. And you're just like, oh, my God, that's Paul from Paul and Young Ron. That's Wheeze. That's Dave. You know there's what I mean? There's Fitz. Like, it's it a whole bunch of people. It really does. I, don't, I can't think about it like that. Because then I'll start to like trip out about how these are such huge names. And I'm like, really? At the end of the day... They do the same thing that we do. And we're not even like famous. We're radio no, people. <laughs> no. And and it's just, it's funny, but it is true because they've done something right to get to the level that they're at. And it's hard to describe the people that aren't in radio because it's like you have all these different egos and you have everyone that's your competition. But for three days, we all get along, which is kind of weird. It's true. It's like if you took every NBA player and you just had them hang out and have at a hotel for like three days. I, it's true, but at the, at the same time, I think it's the way that it is because we are such a small group of people who do this job, and this job is really weird. You I mean, you cannot burn bridges. You're, you can't. You absolutely can't. And I know people who have, and it has always bit them in the ass at the end of the day because you. it's such a small group, and it's such a unique job that you almost have to just be friendly with the people. I think it was Jeff and Jared, one of the very first radio conferences I ever went to. Jeff and uh, Jeff from Jeff and Jer gave this speech about like the 20 something things he had learned over how many years. And the one thing was if you don't have friends in this business who do the same thing, make some. Because nobody else understands how we do and why we do what we do. 
Yeah, because do you ever try to describe radio to like one of your friends and they just roll their eyes? The other night I was going on this long tangent just about how excited I was about being in New York City. This is the day after I came home. Mm -hmm. And my girlfriend later on that night said something to the fact of, you're getting really cocky. I don't need to hear about radio 24-7. So do you ever have that where you get so excited talking about the business and your friend that's not in it goes, I don't care about these Arbitron <laughs> ratings. Yes. <laughs> yes. I think that's everybody, though, which is, again, why you need yes. friends in radio. And, I mean, that's why, I don't know, I, I feel like Miguel and I have such a great bond, and I feel like part of it, not only are we just sort of kindred spirits anyway, the fact that we do the same thing, it's just next level. So we can talk about all that inner working stuff, and, like, we're having an issue with Adobe Audition, and this went wrong, and that, and your PD talked to you about something. It's You have to share that with someone who knows what you're talking about. What's the weirdest thing that's ever happened to you guys so far here at How 101? Five. The weirdest thing that's happened to us? Yeah. Oh, man. I would say anytime we get pulled into the 1025 Bone Studios, oh my God. weird stuff is going to happen. Especially now with the sign because of Bone TV, everyone True. sees you. Like, it was weird. I was at Best Buy and someone recognized me, and I'm like, How did you know? And they're like, Oh, because of Bone TV. Like, it's weird how the fans get so dedicated to it. They, they are. Recognize you. Absolutely. And I, I have to be honest, I've never logged on to see what it looks like as a viewer, Bone TV, but I have to imagine it's so voyeuristic being able to just watch the people that you like to hear doing what they do. And I understand it. I just, it's its a crazy thing. The one thing I can't read is I cannot read the chat room comments because when I was on Roger and JP a few weeks ago, everyone's like, Hoppy's a pussy. Hoppy sucks. No one likes Hoppy. Hoppy needs to jump off the Howard Franklin. And I'm like, oh, oh. man. I'm like, all right. That's I'm rough. not reading this. No, don't ever read the comments. It's sort of like and anytime you have like a BuzzFeed article or even like a Fox 13 article, the comments are where the worst trolls live. Yeah. It's really, I try to stay away from all that. Especially kind of stuff. radio fans. I mean, they get so into it, which is a good thing. But then on the other side, it's like, they can get really mean over us just talking to the microphone. I don't get it. I don't I don't know. It's a special brand of person though that listens to the bone that gets that crazy. I mean, we have some pretty turned up listeners every now and then yeah. on hot, and especially when we first came here and this is why I sort of made a note that like Tampa listeners, Tampa Bay listeners, I almost feel like have been trained to be on the defensive. So even when they call you when we first started on the Miguel show on hot, um, when we would get phone calls, it was almost like people were ready to attack and they were ready to do battle with you. And we we're, were like, hey, listen, our show is a lot different. We're kind of laid back. We want to hear everyone's opinion. We may not always agree, yeah. but we want to hear you. And so it took a while to train our listeners to say, OK, we're not about to jump down your throat. But I feel like just the atmosphere. Think about it. You've got you know, you had you have Calta, you have Bubba. They had that big war. You have you had MJ and BJ and everybody was just so ready to pounce. So this I just feel like this town was built radio-wise, on an atmosphere of aggression. When you guys first came to town, was this when you were the most nervous out of anything in your radio career, joining a town like this with such long, unique types of radio? Um, Definitely, definitely. Although, I mean, I don't know how much history you know, but I was actually in Tampa before with Miguel on another station that didn't do well and it yeah. flipped. Um, so when we actually first started on that station, that was my first big market experience ever. How and scary. It was terrifying. I was so afraid. I was afraid to talk because, you know, it, just the way that we were set up coming from Panama City, we were used to talking for long, <laughs> ex, you yeah. know, lengths of time. And um, when we got to Tampa, they were like, oh, make it real short. And it was just very, it was frightening because I didn't know what to say and how to say it. And I, I ended up not saying a lot for like the first couple of weeks and they had to sit us down and say, you can talk. Yeah. But it's just really scary when you don't, when you don't know. What is the key to figuring out how to say a lot in a short time? Because I'm so long winded. Yeah. I don't know if I could do it. Uh, you know what? You can, but it really comes down to planning out what you're going to talk about and how you want to lead it off. Yeah. You have to plan it because we used to, if you're, you know, I think it's awesome that on the bone you can just kind of go for 15 minutes and get to a point. And I miss that kind of radio. I miss doing that talk intensive radio. It's a little bit, sometimes it's a little bit more difficult, not because you have to fill with content, but you, because you have to choose your words so carefully. Yeah. You have to start off with a hook. You have to be able to engage people within the first, I think, seven seconds. How do you do that? 
you got to lead with a, a, a good hook. That's always when I when I write my teases for our stories, you know, that hook has to pop out at you. And it's like you're using your phone wrong. So that hooks you and you're like, well, why am I using my phone wrong? And then you get to like a little more meat of the sandwich there. I'm using my phone wrong. Oh, I'm doing these three things that I'm texting the wrong way. And people probably hate me for it. And yeah. I'll tell you why in three minutes. So you have to really hook them. You have to make it brief. And then you have to be memorable. So you have to plan it. That's all it comes down to is pre-planning. How much prep do you put into the show each day? Um, me personally, I do a little over an hour. Because I get here a little bit before five o'clock in uh, the morning, and then I do I prep the trending and Hollywood segments. So I figure out which stories we're going to talk about, and I do the teases, which, as yeah. you know, pre planning is really good. And then throughout the day, that's just a different kind of prep. Like if we need to fill a slot on the next day's show, we'll text between us, you know, Miguel and Jared and I, and try and figure out what we're going to fill it with and what direction we want to go in. And ultimately, Miguel has the say over that. See, I don't know how you do it where you do all the prep, like right when you wake up for all the news. Because mm-hmm. to me, I would need it the night before just so that I don't have pressure. You know what I mean? That's the thing. You have to, though, because stuff breaks overnight That's and you want to be on top of it. So I, I wish it was that way, too, because I'm more like you. I would rather plan it out, have time to digest the information yeah. and go that route. But you can't really. You have to be able to do everything and still and, and still be working during the show in case something breaks during the show that you need to talk about. What is the key to finding what type of news from like TMZ or Perez Hilton? What is the key to finding the news that's the most important? Because there's so much on there. It's insane. Oh, it is. And I'll be honest with you. That's a struggle because I get sidetracked sometimes real easily. If I, I find something just for me personally, I'm like five tips about why I won't find love again. Let me read this really yeah. quick. But you have to. My filter is something that would jump out to a woman ages. Mm, I would I would say eighteen broad eighteen to thirty four, um, but even more hyper focused around maybe eighteen to twenty six or twenty eight, and so I'm using that filter about if I'm that woman, what do I find interesting? What do I want to listen about uh, on my way to work? And what do I think I want to talk about later on in the day? So that's always my filter, and I I try to go through that with any of it. I want to ask you this, just because you're a female, and I just. I want to try and figure it out. I'm Please. really trying to get it. I'm pretty open book. And if you ask me anything too crazy, I will shut you down. Right. But So feel free to ask. This isn't too crazy. Okay. Why do the Kardashians matter? What is different than any other girl in porn who then got lucky for being famous? Like, I, it mind boggles me. It is insane. Even Paris Hilton had her time mm-hmm. and she went away. Like, what is it about them that makes them worth talking about? Okay, multifaceted. And we actually asked this on the show because just uh, between you and I and yeah. everybody else, I'm not a Kardashian fan. I hate them so much. Here's what I think it is. And this is based on some listener feedback as well. I think it's, yes, there was a sex tape involved. But what I will give them credit for is they're very shrewd business women, especially Kris Jenner. Kris oh, Jenner has an amazing she's business a g- head. Genius. Yeah. So she's like the ringleader of that family. And the good thing for them is that there are a lot of them and they're all really attractive. And they're all you know, they all kind of have that same business sense. So it's not just that Kim got lucky with a porn. She did, but it's not just that. Yeah. And it and and so you have Kris Jenner who is like I can make money off of this. So she started. That's what I don't like about her. Making, I know. I know. It's it's kind of like you sell your soul because yeah. she got what she wanted. But at the at the. Um, I love how they use the word leaked sex tape. I'm like, come on. It wasn't leaked. Yeah. Maybe it, they found it. But come on. You think Kim's that mad that she made money off of it? I don't think she's mad. I, at this exactly. point, she has nothing to do but thank that sex tape. You know oh, what I'm know. saying? But no, I think that honestly, the be, because they're such good business people and they know how to keep themselves in the news, I promise you, every morning I come in and there is something about the Kardashians. It's one of them, yeah. whether it, and now they're, and they just keep on popping it's up. It's fake news. It's For not a, a while, real it news, was Chloe and, and then Courtney and then Kim got pregnant and now it's Kylie and there's there's so many of them. So it works because Tyga is creepy. Tyga's a legit pedophile. He yeah. goes after like, He's I love creepy. how no one talks about that because no one knows who Tyga is unless you listen to rap but if this was like drake or something we'd be talking about it but tiger's a legit scumbag yeah it's really kind of gross when you think about it i mean it, it truly is maybe because he had the the mom's blessing it didn't make it as creepy but it's creepy 
That so, whole, no, it, there's just I, no morals. It's it's rough. And it, honestly, I think it's because people like to see w- how the other half lives. And because it's it's scripted, obviously. It's not 100% oh. real life. Like, there are they take yeah. their own life dramas and then they script them. Um, and I just think that people like to see inside. And, they, and like, they like beauty and they like money and they like to see what it's like. I just think they're such bad role models that I think... Kids that are like coming up now are getting really influenced by them. Yeah, and and uh, what's her name, Hannah Montana. Oh, Miley. Well, yeah. I think we we've, we've gone past the Miley Cyrus. Do you for think a we're bit. over that? I do. Thank God, because she was gross. No. That wasn't even attractive. And I was no. like, what are you doing? You fake Madonna wannabe. The only good thing is that Miley Cyrus does have the chops to sing a little bit. Yes, you I forget will sometimes, but I she will does. Give her that. Yeah, but no, I I agree. Some of these celebrities, it just it boggles my mind how they get where they are and how they stay where they are um, and why. But you're right. And it scares me sometimes because I have a two-year-old and I just don't know what to expect when we get to an age where she is... Just give her a razor her whole life or a Nokia. Or a Nokia flip phone. <laughs> Never give her an iPhone. No. That's what my kid's getting. He's getting some brick cell phone from the 90s. Right? So that you don't have to worry about all that. But see, they're going to find a way somehow. Just make it as hard as possible. Like, my dad used to hate that I watched adult cartoons. He would always return it, but I kept renting it. So at least make it tough. Just yeah. don't ever give up. That's how I feel it. <laughs> don't ever don't ever give up making it harder for them. Yeah. That's I think I think that's good. Thank you for that parenting advice. I like that. No, I really want to weird. because I don't actually let her have a tablet or anything. And we were at Ray's Fan Fest this weekend. And someone, um, it was actually um, Miguel's boyfriend, gave her his phone to play a game c- to keep her busy. And I'm like, oh, she doesn't. She doesn't understand that. She doesn't know what that is. What she doesn't know what to do with it because she doesn't use it. Yeah. So I was pretty proud of that parenting moment, but it's tough. See, I think it's one thing if you give her one of those, but you have no internet and all it is is like Candy Crush or Angry Birds. That's fine, but I know people my age that have kids and they let their kids go on YouTube and look up things, and I'm oh. like, what are you doing? No. Nope. Like that's nope. when. Things get bad. You can get to the bad part of YouTube real fast. Oh, yeah. And if you want to go back to the comments, the YouTube commenters will have are... the C word. They don't need to know the C oh word or whatever is there. It's oh, bad. It's the scum of society. Scary. Also, okay. going back to everything going on with Kim Kardashian, okay. why do people hate Kanye West so much? I find him to be funny as hell because he's running this machine. The media is going with it, and that's what he wants. I love how everybody hates on him, but the hate is just as good as the positivity. I feel like he wins in the end. Um, He probably does. Here's why I actually just think he is a lunatic, because even in moments of uh, behind the scenes type stuff, when he's talking, he's talking as though he really does believe his own hype. And I truly believe he does think he's better than everybody i love it it's funny (laughs) it is funny it's funny to observe but it's also kind of scary because we're putting all this attention on someone who i really think might be a sociopath of some kind and he's definitely a narcissist oh absolutely he's got some kind of personality disorder and i think a lot of celebrities do his mom died too to me ever since his mom died we all seem to overlook it two years later he did the whole thing where i'm gonna let you finish that was two years after his mom died yeah and i think that really affected him Agreed. Agreed. And I think that the Kardashians, one of my friends actually pointed this out to me, and I think she's so correct. Uh, the Kardashians prey on these guys that don't have parents so and true. they're sort of lost. Chris they, Humphreys is lost. Chris Humphreys, um, Lamar Odom. Ray J. Ray J. Kanye West. Ray J. Bush never really made it. They they prey on these guys. Yeah. And so uh, they sort of build them up and then can you know watch them fall, and it helps them. It helps their cause. But at the at the same time, I think that there's legitimately just some issue with Kanye, and he makes great music. That's what and I it, love too. It really did happen after his mom died. I think the wheels came off. Well, the wheels were sort of coming off when he was with Michael Myers for Hurricane oh, Katrina. That George was when <laughs> you're like, okay, what's Kanye West about? George Bush hates black people. <laughs> yeah, he that. That oh, was dear. when I was like, all right. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah, that was a little rough. And even Mike Myers was like, "Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go." <laughs> they look so uncomfortable. It had to be rough to be Mike Myers in that moment. But yeah, so I th- see. I think Kanye has always had these weird personality tendencies, and the mom thing that screwed him up. And then it was sort of me. He he's believed his own hype. Yeah. That's what happened. And then he just got into deep. I love the people who think he doesn't have any talent. Like, it's people that don't listen to rap music that mm-hmm. go, he's a no-talent hack. 
It's like I can name about twelve good songs from oh five to probably twenty twelve. Like yeah. just because he's a jackass doesn't mean he has no talent. Oh no, he's the music super now talented. Kind of weird. Yeah, but I think that's the Kardashian influence. Did you see that one video from two years ago, Bound Two? Yes, that was one of the weirdest things I've ever. Again. Kardashian influence. Like, she was right up on that motorcycle in that video you saw. That I'm was sure. a dirty video. It really was. My favorite thing about that video was the spoof that um, <laughs> James Franco and Seth Rogen did. Oh, actually. my God. That was great. Mm-hmm. But do you think it's going to be weird for her when she reaches like 45 years old and her kids like 12, 13, and they're going to be like, your mom's in a sex tape? Your mom has all these selfies or do you think they're going to be so self-absorbed it's just going to be another round of them i've often wondered that when it comes to like northwest and that yeah I, you know i think when you grow up around all that it's almost hard not to just become what that is and you don't think anything different of it and it's not their fault that's just the atmosphere they grow up i i, I think about um madonna's daughter a lot because madonna i mean in her heyday was absolutely crazy yeah but uh and now she's at an age where her daughter is what Maybe 14? Around there? Yeah, maybe older. Who maybe knows? older. And I think she's doing okay. And she's in obviously easy to Google. And you can see all the crazy stuff that Madonna got into. But her daughter seems to be handling it, I guess. Her kid's 19 years old. Wow. So. 19? Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Okay, well, <laughs> that is so... <laughs> Clearly, she's done okay for herself. Yeah, so. she's sort of gone off the map. I think as she gets like older, she's kind of gone away. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think her time's up. Maybe you have to, though. I mean, I mean the kids. Maybe if you're a kid of a person like that, like a, a child of Madonna or Michael, ja- poor Michael Jackson's kids, yeah. you almost have to just go into hiding and do your own thing. So you sort of feel bad for him a little bit. I, I feel, feel bad for Northwest. I feel bad for Michael Jackson's kids. That <laughs> has to be a rough spot to be like Blanket or whatever. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. And his name's Blanket or his not. But they call him that? Oh, what a mess. So I felt sad. bad for his kid, too, when she went up there at the uh, wake and she had that speech. Mm-hmm. I was just like, yeah. why it's, are you doing that? It it's hard. Weird. It's hard. I do feel bad for celebrity kids that have to go through that kind of stuff. So, like, do you ever find it where you don't want to talk about these famous people, but you feel like you have to for the audience, even though they're awful human beings at times? Yes, all the time. Like, the, I, if I had my druthers, I wouldn't necessarily talk about them. In fact, I did go on a little bit of a hiatus from the Kardashians, because like I told you, every day... That's what Miguel said. Yeah, every day, um, something about the Kardashians rolls across my desk, but I have to say, I it, they're, it's easy to get wrapped up in their circus. So I have to actively take a step back and be like, there's got to be something else going on. I don't want to talk about them today, but we do a segment called Hot in Hollywood, and yeah. it airs twice a day, so i got to talk about something. So if it's a slow day, I know the Kardashians got something going on. Now, I saw that you guys are now on Dish Nation. How's that going? Oh, my gosh. I'm so excited I'm about excited that. for you guys, too. I've been wanting you guys to get on there, too. Yeah. this It kind of just happened out of, I don't know if out of nowhere, but we have been doing our Hot Dish segments um, for a while now, you know, for since but way before Christmas, I want to say maybe when did that start? I don't know. It doesn't matter. Um, but what happened was I actually got um, a message from one of the executive producers of Dish Nation. And um, as it turns out, we went to the same college, which is crazy. I went to a very small school in Ohio. So no one Cleveland. has <laughs> Cleveland. <laughs> right. But I'm, I didn't even go in Cleveland. I went to Ohio Northern University out in West Central Ohio. And it's a tiny school, most notable for pharmacy majors. So the fact that he went there and I went there at the same time, kind of crazy. So we started talking and then um, he w- would watch the stuff. And then he said, this is I really like you guys stuff. Um, and then he he reached out one time and said, I'd like to put you guys into the national show every now and then and of course I freaked out and I was like this is amazing and then it sort of turned into now once a week we get to be in the national show which is I it starts on Thursday this coming Thursday so I feel like Ryan Hoppy I have got to be I got to get my shit together this is perfect timing you're on happy hour then you're going on this nation everything's looking up for you Holly it really is it's major so I have I mean I got to make sure like my face is on point my hair my clothes it's, it's a big I deal. do Hoppy TV in here on my uh, Periscope where I save it and then I upload it to YouTube. Mm. But like 12 people watch it. It gets decent on 
demand numbers, but not that many people watch it live. But what I'm getting at is I don't ever look presentable. What I'm wearing then, what I'm wearing now is what I wear when I'm doing it. Right. So I can't imagine being you where every city is going to see it oh, and God. you have to look radio ready. You know, know what I mean? I do. And I have never been that person. So th- to be honest, the past year for me has been a very um, tumultuous year. There's been a lot of change. And so now turning into a person who this year I had to figure out eyeliner. And like, really? I was never an eyeliner person. And now I feel like I've gotten pretty good. But it's true. Once you start having to look presentable on TV, it's a whole different ball game. And I, I had to buy new clothes. I had to buy a whole separate set of makeup that I leave here. And it seems really silly. And I even feel kind of embarrassed to be talking about it. Like, that matters. But you matters. have to look good for TV. But you, that's part of the job now. Howard talked about how it took him 30 minutes to put on makeup for America's Got Talent. Yeah. Everyone does it. it it's true. And I, I don't want to turn into a person that's like, well, I put my makeup on today. <laughs> like, But I, I have to. I used to like throw a little bit of makeup on before I got to work at like 4.30 in the morning. Yeah. And now I wait until 9 a.m. So I'm turning into one of those people that puts makeup on at work yeah. during the show. But if I don't... My makeup will slide off, and I will look like crap on TV. So I have I, I have to do it, but I it's a it's a problem I would like to have for sure. How hard is it being a girl where you are expected to look good twenty four seven? Because like for us dudes, I feel like we can look average. Yeah, it's a total double edged sword, and it's it's cool, but it sucks because I don't mind. I I like dressing up now. Like I I'm I'm all for it, but it does suck sometimes when. You know, I look over and the only thing Miguel has had to do is pick out his hair. And I'm spending 20 minutes every single day. Are you sure he's not putting on a lot of makeup? I could see him being a prima donna. No, he really, to be honest, he isn't. He's like the worst gay ever. Like you would (laughs) think. We did a roast of Miguel one time and that was my go-to line. Like I called him the worst gay ever because when I first met him, I'm like, yes, there's a gay guy that's going to help me with my clothes and my my, um, interior design. No. Nope. No, he does not have that gene. He's very real because I actually didn't know that he was gay at the morning show boot camp. When I listened to your show back when you guys were in uh, Panama City yeah. and I read it online and it said a gay man, I was like, Mikhail's gay? Right. Like, for some reason, I just didn't think he was. Yeah, it, it, it's because he's not what one would consider to be a, a gay stereotype, I Which think. I like because I feel like sometimes, I'm not trying to be offensive, sometimes they try too hard to put on that image. Mm. But that's what I like about Miguel is he's a real guy. He's, he's very just him. genuine. Yeah. He's nice. Because there's so many people in radio that try to put on a persona. Right. Or they're different behind a microphone. And that's what I like about your show is you guys are just two people that are friends that talk. We do. And Jared, too. You guys just all seem like you care about each other. We do. And I I really think that's the direction you have to go now in radio. You cannot have this different persona or you can't be someone that you're not. Because now in radio, the way that things are and the way that they should be is people just want to connect with someone. And you can't connect to a fake person. Yeah. You know, and I think people can read BS now. Yes. Like the whole wackiness of radio shows, yeah. or shock jocks. I think that whole era is dead just because it's been played out and there's nothing really to go with anymore. It's not as entertaining anymore. That era is done. You have to be authentically you, which, by the way, is difficult because first you have to figure out who you are. And, and that's hard. I, and, I still struggle with yeah. it. And that means you have to be open with the audience, too. If you want to be a real host and not a faked character that means you have to say some things about your personal life you do and you have to be vulnerable and i'll tell you what i'm taking this well i'm pretty far behind in my courses but i'm taking this um online course about the power of vulnerability basically and what it means to be vulnerable and it it doesn't mean necessarily just you know word vomiting every little detail of your personal life but it does mean opening up enough um to let people see who you are and so Doing that just on a day-to-day basis is difficult because you have to kind of choose who you want to be vulnerable with. But as a radio personality, you can't really make that decision. So some people aren't going to like it and some people are. But that's the beauty of it is that you they can choose whether to like you or not, but you have to be you because no one else can be. And that's where hopefully the ratings come from. Are you ever self-conscious about who you are on air or are you used to what you do on air? No, I'm 
for me, that's always been a struggle because I am a people pleaser. Me too. And right. I think a lot of us in radio are. I think a lot of us got into radio. We're trying to overcompensate. Yeah. To to make people like us because yeah. we want that validation. I do anyway. And I have a feeling a lot of people are that way. But I um I have a tr- I have trouble with it because I want people to like me and I don't want to offend anybody. That's just me in real life. But then I have to take that hat off and say, if I'm going to be real, I'm going to offend some people yeah. or some people aren't going to like me. I was really worried about that when I uh, talked about my divorce on the air. I was like, because there's a line, like, you know, there's a fine line where I said, I don't want to involve my ex any more than I have to because it's not on him. This, this is my radio show. It's not his. He's not here to defend himself. So I had to talk about it with being careful not to, you know, step on any of toes, his family. Yeah. I mean, we have a kid together, so... She deserves respect. And that's where I have a hard time where I want to be sometimes more open, but I'm like, some parts I need to pull back. That's my thing too, is I have a girlfriend right now and I'm trying to figure out the way where I talk about her on air, but you don't talk about her on on air at the same time. Like, I don't want to be one of those guys where you don't say anything about no, your personal life. You have to talk about it. But you do have to talk about it. It's just, you do it to a limit. You be re- you respectful I've seen it on radio it. where it's more like exploitation like right. up in Cleveland and I'm not going to let that happen again. No. But at the same time I do want to make her a bit on the show. I'm just giving it time. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. You have to give it time. You you do. And, but you have to be real about it. But there's a level of respect that you owe her yeah. and that I owe anybody that I ever date in the future um, where I need to be open and honest about it regardless of what people will think even though I'm like oh god what if they don't like me? But guess what? That's my job. Here's the weirder part. It's more that it's weird that my mom and my aunt and my uncle and all my friends listen to The Bone. That's the weirder part than saying anything to a random person in their car on the Howard Franklin. Yes. Saying The people that love you. That you care about, they're hearing it. Yes. That's what's actually weirder than some random Joe Schmell. You know what I mean? You're so right. I mean, nobody really cares if somebody that has no clue who you are would not care to meet you. Like, I, I could be more honest with them all day, every day, but then you realize that people that listen to The bone are going to tell other people that also are in your real life what you just said yeah. and so i have gotten in trouble by that more than once and that i don't can i just take a side tangent i don't know what it is about that damn studio but every time i go in there i feel like i lose my mind because it's like so they want to draw all of the juicy good stuff out of you and you have to be careful that you got to like you know you do a very good job of giving them what they want but not saying too much I respect I, how you do it. Thank you. I really, you got to walk that line because you still have to have your dignity intact at the end of the day. Yeah. Um, but you still want to be the same, like I said, open and honest because that's why that's why I do what I do. I want to be vulnerable on the air. It's just hard for me sometimes. I love when you get the tweets from some dude from Largo who thinks he knows you and he just starts trashing maybe how you parent or how I live my life. It's like, dude, you're behind a keyboard. No one cares about you. No, but that's kind of the beauty of what we do because every Everyone feels like they have an opinion, which is maddening sometimes. I'm like, listen, I don't go to your job and explain to you how to, like, you know, put your TPS reports together. And I don't judge how you do it (laughs) or, like, put the bolts in the washing machine. I'm not telling you how to make those over there. But at the same time, we work in a profession where that's just par for the course and you have to be ready for it. So you have to have a thick skin in this business. And that's what really sucks. I'll, I'll tell you what. If somebody came after my kid in any way. Oh, that's different. Done. done. That's I what I find sickening. I despise the fake tough guy, the fake tough guys in radio that talk all the smack online, talk all the smack on air, but they would never say it to our faces. They would never say it to you. They're Some of the stuff that people email us and the way that they speak to you via email or text or tweet or whatever, if they saw you in real life, they would never have the audacity to speak to you that way. Actually, some Bone fans kind of say it to your face, but they're nice about it. They're like, nice to meet they're you, like Ryan jokey. Hoppy. jokey. I hate you, but it's cool to meet you. I'm like, thank you. Like, but okay. like, they would never say, I hope you jump off the Howard Franklin. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> like, what is wrong? This is a problem with the internet. People are crazy. People lose their damn minds. But anyway. So yeah, I know I you got to be vulnerable is the bottom line. Where do you want to see your show in the next year? Like, what's your plan? What do you, Miguel, and Nervous Jared have in your mind? Well, obviously, that answer is be number one. We yeah. we want to win in the ratings and just be in. Well, 
the goal is number one, but obviously the journey is just continually getting better. And I'll be honest with you, I'm seeing some really great things in the streets and online. And hopefully, you know, as we continue to just do what we do, the ratings reflect that. Um, I, I love it when people come up to you at lunch or whatever, and they're like, oh my God, are you Holly? Are you Miguel? That to me makes every single thing worth it because it means that we're making a connection. That's what I like too. I got recognized twice at Best Buy, and it's not even that I'm getting recognized. It's the fact that what I'm doing is making some positive impact. Yes. It's not even that we're getting recognized where they want a picture. No, no. It's more you go, okay, I just got to keep doing our thing. You know what I mean? Exactly. And I want to, at the end of the day, I want to make a positive impact in someone's life that day. That's always my goal. When we get into that studio, if I can somehow touch someone, make their day a little bit better, that's all I really want because I, even from a young age, I just want to entertain. I just yeah. want to entertain people. I just want to make you smile. And so that's my goal. Is that how you've been your whole life where you always want to entertain people and make them happy? Because you have a very positive vibe to yourself. Yeah, absolutely. I I definitely was a put on a show type of kid, Yeah. I'm, which is a weird thing. It's a dichotomy because I'm kind of shy actually, like in real life, just in uh, odd social situations, I get kind of shy. And so I have to pretend that I'm outgoing but I mean even as a kid once I would get comfortable in a situation or whatever I would want to make people laugh like making people laugh to me is the best and so I wanted to base I didn't know how to but I wanted to base a career on that on entertaining people and just making them enjoy life a little bit more and I think I wrote a paper in seventh grade that they said what do you want to be and I said an entertainer and my mom got worried like I wanted to be a Vegas showgirl oh my god that would have been bad um it would have been but like I'm a dancer too so I sort of feel like I would have liked the little headdress and everything but um that's always been me I always have wanted to Put on a show, make an impact, make people laugh. Now, for people that have not heard the Miguel show, why should they tune in every morning to How 101.5? Ooh, well, because, uh, first of all, hopefully we make you laugh. But also, hopefully we are welcoming and that you feel as though we are your friends. Because what we call the listeners to our show are the Miguel Show family. And so we want you to be friends with us we want to be friends with you and we want you to join the conversation we're talking about stuff hopefully that you would talk about with your friends at lunch or out for drinks or whatever depending on the topic sometimes we get a little crazy like damn that's kinky girl so sometimes it's just it's just stuff that's fun it makes you feel good about your day we do get serious sometimes like with you know intense topics yeah personal stuff But again, that's stuff that you would talk about with your friends. And we give you an avenue that if that happened to you, you can call and talk to us about it. So we're just basically a group of friends that get to have conversations with you. Now, when the bone gets edgy, the one thing they have to worry about is the FCC and that's it. But when you guys get edgy, how do you do it so that you're not too, like, edgy for the listeners that might be younger? How do you guys do it with a segment like, damn, that's kinky? How do you guys do it? What we do is... First of all, we call our show Family Conscious. We way back in the day when I was on a different show, the that guy Kramer show, we would we tried for a while to say that we were family friendly. We're not. We're really not family friendly, but we are family conscious in that we will say before a crazy segment happens, "Hey, just want to give you a heads up, this is not kid friendly." I like that. Not kid friendly, so you choose. Like we're putting that on you. If you the parent want your kid to hear what's about to happen, I just want you to know this is not for kids, so you might want to turn it down a little bit and then come back when I don't know. Give me about five minutes and then come back. What does like, your boss think of that? Does he like that idea? Oh, yeah. He loves it. I really like our new program director. Yeah. I think that he has a great mind for radio. And we sort of come from this a similar school, the two, Miguel and I and our uh, our new boss. And you guys so, want to win. I like your competition in you, you guys. We, I can just yeah. tell you guys are really competitive. We, oh, absolutely. We Here's the thing. We're very nice people. I, I consider us to be genuinely good. I, like, I think I'm a good person, but of course that's up to interpretation. Yeah. You know, if somebody thinks that I'm not, that's fine. I mean, you have your opinion. We're genuine people. I want to be friends with, with everybody. And radio, like we talked about at the beginning, radio is a small thing. So you want to be friends with everybody. Yeah. At the same time, I will choke you out and I will take you down in the ratings because that's my job and I want to win. What is the key to having that type of attitude where you want to take everyone down but you don't get too cocky because that's how i've been like thinking like i want to take over radio and be the next thing for my age 
But when I say that, it comes off cocky. So what is the attitude I should take in anybody in radio where we're up and coming, we want to make it, but we don't want to come off too over the top? Because when I first came to town in May, I think that was my biggest problem. That and I didn't have my meds because I wasn't seeing anybody in town. But now I feel better than ever. And I just, I want to be humble, but I want to like take over. So how should any of us do this? Well, I think it's that you don't ever, I, that's a, it's an interesting You know question. what I mean though? No, I, I get what you mean. I'm just trying to think of the right way to put this. And I think it comes down to you keep just doing your hardest and it's not that you're ever like, you're never combative. We're never combative with anybody. We just know that what we put out, we have such a strong belief that it's going to work. That's sort of all you need. And I mean, it's not like we're going to stand on the top of the Skyway and like beat our chest and be like, look at how awesome we are. Because that is not, A, we shouldn't do that because that's that's never how you get anybody to listen to you. Yeah. But we're just, it's like a slow, um, it's like a slow rise. You just do what you do and you do what you're passionate about. And pretty soon people start hearing about you and there's never any need to be like, look at us. We're so cool. We're going to take down everybody else. Like that's the mentality, but that's never what you say because that's not it's a nice. Process. And it's a process. It you have to really ingrain yourself with, with the people, like with, with our family members, we want to be their friends. We don't want them to just, you know, be like, oh, hey, I'm waving at you one day. Like if somebody emails the the Facebook, I'm going to email them back. And like I've I've formed friendships with listeners before. Awesome. So like we actually genuinely want to know you and meet you and understand what makes this area tick and become part of it. So all that takes time. And so if you just keep doing what you're doing and do the best job at it that you can, I mean, you see us, Ryan Hoppy, like yeah. Miguel and I are usually here until about two in the afternoon. Oh, there's times that I'll see you guys and I cannot believe you guys are awake. You guys look like you're from The Walking Dead sometimes. <laughs> I feel bad, especially Miguel. I know. He, he looks well, so tired. I wish he would wear his sleep apnea mask more often. No, he actually he does wear it. <laughs> he does wear it. I think what happens is he's still getting used to it and sometimes he knocks it off during the night, but he, he's got sleep apnea, so he does get really tired. But anyway, um, he... It, both of us just care so much about doing what we love and obviously we want to win and we know that the way to do that is to do the best that we can that we know how and so it's just putting in the hard hours and really doing the hard work and I think that's what a lot of people take for granted it's hard and I know that sounds silly saying like oh we talk we talk on the radio but it really is hard like getting into the community and making those connections and learning about the city and learning about each listener. Like it's a lot of work, but we're willing to do it. What do you do in your free time so that you don't burn out? I need to find something. <laughs> I meditate and I work out. Yeah. You gotta meditate. That is the best thing possible. I Go know. on YouTube, search it up. I Even if it's to. just three minutes, Holly, it'll help you. Trust I really me. do. I, I was on this kick when we were unemployed for a while and I found um, this whole, what was it? What It was a Deepak Chopra meditative series and I loved it. And then I got away from it because I got busy, but I need that. I like to, I dance, like I take a dance class That's once cool. a week. Um, and there's a recital by the way in June, so you should come. But anyway, there's like a day, I do dance and I, I do um, bike ride with my daughter. So those are sort of my two only things, but I need, and, and sometimes I paint. So like any sort of artistic outlet, that's the route that I take. Now, where can people find your work online and on the radio? Okay. Well, anytime you want to reach me anywhere, it's just Radio Holly, pretty much. Um, you can find me on Instagram. You can find me on Twitter, on Snapchat, all at Radio Holly. Uh, my Facebook page is, I have a personality page, like a like page yeah. and then I have a personal page and I don't really accept a lot of new people on my personal page because of my daughter. I'm going to try to keep that more for you have to what's already there but there's a personality page you can find me on the Miguel show page on Hot 101.5's Facebook page um, so I mean I'm all up on all the social media it's easy to find me. Well keep up the good work I love what you and Miguel are doing and I predict that 2016 will be the year that you guys take over this market. I hope so. I hope you're right. Thank you. This has been Hoppy Hour. I am your host, Ryan Hoppy, saying peace out. Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour.